Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint the Death Rattle Skeleton from Curse City. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now onto the video. So the first colour we're using today is going to be Citadel Rekarth Flesh. I'm going to be using this to paint up all of the bone on a miniature. So depending on which Death Rattle you're painting, different ones have different parts. They have the armour covering some of the shins or some that have more arm exposed, that kind of thing. So just paint up all of the skeleton using Rakarth Flesh. I'll give you a nice base coat to work from. Now we're going to be using Citadel Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to paint up all of the shield, like the metal parts of the shield. You've also got the little discs, like the scale mail, down his front and round the back of the helmet too. So just give these all a good coat of Liberator Gold so you get that nice smooth finish to it. Great looking miniatures these. Love the details on the shield, like all the corrosion and the damage to them, all the cloth and stuff like that, the way it's all rotten away. Really cool miniatures. Now we're going to use some Word Bears Red. I'm going to use this to paint the outside of the robes that he's got on. So the cloth that's hanging down on the front, the outside of it, you want to be painting with this. I think I'm painting the inside too here, but we're going to be painting the inside of a different colour in a moment, so just paint the outside of the cloth with Word Bearers Red. Now we're going to be using Citadel Corn Red. I'm going to be using this to paint the inside of the cloth and also the left hand part of the flag that he's got on the standard here. So I was pondering what colour to do the flag, looking at the colours I've gotten, and realised that I had the Sons of Horus green, which is pretty close to what's used, I think. So with that, but the first part, we're going to be using corn red for. So you want to give a nice coat of this to the flag, the inside of the cloth, and we can move on to the next colour. Now we're going to be using a Citadel Dryad Bark, I'm going to use this to paint the shaft of the spear and also the handle on the inside of the shield which appears to be wood. It's the first time I've seen a piece of wood used for that on a miniature. So a bit of dryad bark to do the wood on both of these sections. Now we're going to be using Citadel Lead Belcher. It's going to be to paint all of the armour plates and his helm and also the tip of the spear. There's also a little bracket on that wood on the shield as well, like the handle of the shield. So you can use it for that too. Now we're going to use Citadel Sons of Horus Green. We're going to start painting the other half of the flag. Just get that nice coat of this. We used to have this years ago when I started painting a 30k Sons of Horus Army. Because I wasn't a big fan of an airbrush, so I just used that airbrush paint to paint the miniatures and it took an age. These paints make things a lot easier to do. Now we're using some Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm just going to use this to do the straps on the back of the armour and also holding his scabbard. There's two small straps that seem to come out the back of the breastplate, but you can't really see them or get access to them too well. But if you can do on the miniature that you're doing, you can use it for that too.
Now we're going to be using Citadel Caro Bird Crimson. I'm going to use this to shade all of the word bird as red. That will give it the nice deep red shades. I'm going to use a different colour on the corn red. So just the word bird is red for now, the outside of the cloak. Like so. Next up, Citadel Colia Green. We're going to use this to shade the Sons of Horus Green on the flag here. Or Collier Green, however you want to see it. Very quick layer, that one. Now we're going to be using Citadel Juchi Violet. We're going to use this to paint the corn red areas, so that involves the rest of the flag and also the inside of the robes and the cloth material he's wearing. Now Citadel Seraphim Sepia, can use this to paint all of the bone. I really do like this shade layer, it does bring out the details, you can see everything a lot clearer. You could just stop painting at this point if you really wanted to, because you've got all the details on show. You've got some shading, you've got some highlighty bits. It doesn't look too bad at all to be honest. If you batch paint or paint loads of them, could be quite a handy way to do it. So now we're going to use Citadel Null Oil. I'm going to use this to paint the tip of the spear. Also that little bracket and the dryad bark too. Like so. Going to use Citadel Agrax Earth Shade now. Going to use this on all of the areas of Liberator Gold. This is just to grime up the shield and dull down all the shiny parts of that Liberator Gold. I use Citadel Black Templar, I'm using this on all of the armour plates here. Now the Death Rattle do have the black armour, but I'm quite a fan of being able to see a little bit of that metallic showing through. So I thought the Black Templar over the top would give you that blackness to the armour, while still being able to see a little bit of the shine of the metallic underneath. Then we can do those light blue highlights over the top of that. Like so. Next up, we're going to be using some Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast. I'm using this to do the straps on the back of the armour plate and across his back there. Now again, this is one of the favourite colours that I've got from the contrast range. I think it's a really, really nice colour. Now I'm just going to start reapplying the Word Bird as Red to the cloth of his robes there. I thought I'd have a play around with a different background, see how that affected it, but I think it makes the colour slightly skewed. So I'll probably try with a white or black background, see how they work. We're just reapplying this colour, if you're thinking about where the light's going to be catching it, so the top edges, and leaving the shade on the undersides and in the recesses. You just want to start applying this so that you get that smooth colour on the top flat surfaces, and then the shades in the recesses and then the lower parts of those robes. Now we're going to add some Citadel Squig Orange. I'm going to mix some of that with the Corn Red, and just lighten that up, and then we're going to start highlighting the area that we've just coloured in. So again, you're highlighting the area that you put Corn Red on, maybe doing about two-thirds of 
that layer in this colour. Now we've mixed a little bit more squid orange with the previous mix. We're just going to highlight those areas once again. This is all thing about where the light is striking it, so you do want to be highlighting the crests of those ripples in the cloth. Also the areas where you think there's going to be more light catching it. And for the next one, we're going to just use pure squig orange. We're just going to use a tiny little bit of this just to do some extreme highlights on some of the areas and bring out some of the details. So I'm using this to sort of highlight the edges of the cloth and the kind of tips of those crests a little bit just to give it that little bit of a lighter highlight. Now we're going to return back to the Rakarth flesh. I'm going to start painting the skeleton back up. So leaving the Seraphim Sepia in the recesses, you're just going to reapply this to the skeleton. Leaving any details that you've got lots of lumps and bumps on the bones, so you want to make sure that you're leaving the shade in the recesses around those lumps. So like the top of the shin bone there, you've got a little lump at the very top where it joins onto the knee. So you're leaving a little bit of a shade underneath that. Then with the skull too, just being very careful on this particular model, couldn't work out what was going on with his teeth because they seem to stick out quite a bit and also just have one set of teeth there. So we're using Citadel Ushabti bone mixed with the Rakath flesh. We're just going to start highlighting the bones. This makes them that little bit brighter and gives that almost bony colour. Now we've mixed white with the previous mix and we're just going to do one highlight on the bones now. This is just to get the extreme tips of all those bone sections highlighted and give them a bit of a bright highlight to make them stand out a little bit. Now we're going to start with corn red and start reapplying the colour to the part of the flag and the inside of his robes. Now it's a nice way of showing the differences between the reds and how they come together. Seeing them directly next to each other helps too. See one of them is more kind of purpley red and that helps with the actual colour of the red itself and also the shade to do that. While the other one is a more orangey red. Now we're just going to mix some Wasdaka red with the corn red. I'm going to highlight the sections that we just painted with the corn red. So again, thinking about where the light is going to be catching these robes. I'm going to be highlighting those so the undersides are all shaded. The tops of the ridges and crests of that material are all highlighted. The flag's an especially good place where you can do a little bit of work, just highlighting the top edges and the flatter surfaces that will be catching the light and leaving the shade in the recesses. It gives you that really nice colour to it. So now we're just going to use pure Wasdaka Red.
we use this to highlight the areas that we've just done with the mix. It's not doing too much with it really, to be honest. Just picking out those areas to highlight. You can see there you're putting in the wrong place and then just wiping it off my finger quickly. Like so. Now we're just going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Pink Horror. I'm just going to pick out some of those details and highlight some edges like we did with the squig orange on the previous cloth layer. The previous cloth type, I should say. It's going to be for the very top of those crests and the little ridges, maybe little nicks in the material and that kind of thing. Now we're returning to Sons of Horus Green. I'm just going to do exactly what we've done with the Corn Red and the Word Bearers Red. I'm going to highlight all the areas that will be catching the light on this cloth. With a view to then adding the lighter layers to highlight those bits that will be catching the most light. And just a slight camera adjustment there just to get that a little bit lighter. Because I wasn't really showing the colour too much. Just going over this part a second time just to get that colour on there, so it's a bit smoother. Now we're going to add some Vallejo White to the Sons of Horus Green, just to get that lighter shade that we're after. See here, I'm picking out the areas that are raised and the crests of those ridges, just to give them the colour and to leave the shade in the recesses. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and start highlighting that once again. So you can see just highlighting maybe about a third of the previous layer with this one. Just to lighten the colour of those raised parts a little bit. Now we're going to use some Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. Use this to darken down the shield a little bit more, make it look that a little bit darker and grimier. There will be more layers coming onto the shield a little bit later on in the video too. Just want to darken those recesses and get that looking out a little bit older and more weathered than it did. Now we're going to use some Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm just going to use this on the tip of the spear. That's to give that that weathered and old look. Now we're going to return to Sons of Horus Green. We're going to start working on those little bluish highlights that they have on the armour plate. I'm just going to use the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush for this. It's got a nice point on it and we're just going to go around all these little creases and dents and ridges on the armour, preferably in view of the camera. So as long as you're highlighting all the creases and ridges, that's all you're aiming for with this part. Now we're going to use some Citadel Nihilac Oxide. I'm going to use this to just go over the lines that we've just put on with the Sons of Horus Green. So you're doing the Nihilac Oxide a little bit thinner. And not over all of the Sons of Horus, just over certain sections of it, just to brighten up some parts of it, leave some parts of it darker. 
you want to see a video of just this section of how to do the armor then give us a shout out and i'll stick one of them up in the future i'm going to return to citadel liberator gold all we're doing here is we're picking out the edges and some of the details so we're going to do the edges of each of these little bits of scale mail down his front and round the helm too we're also going to use the same kind of thing on the shield just picking out the edges and the ridges and any of the little details it's just to make those details stand out while you've got all the shades on there darkening down the recesses and this will bring out the edges and give that a little bit of shine and make it all stand out for you now returning to dryad bark I can use this on the staff and on the shield so i'm using the army painter wargamer character brush here just so i can pick out those ridges on the shield now just going to highlight the staff going down here so leaving the null oil in the recesses just making sure you pick out those lumps and bumps with the dryad bark now we're going to mix some citadel balor brown with the dryad bark and we're just going to highlight those lumps and bumps again so we're going to be doing about 50 percent of the area that you've just done with just the dryad bark and zoom in a little bit here for you so you can see that a little bit clearer Once more, we're adding a little bit more Balor Brown to the previous mix. We're just going to finally do the last highlights on the wood. Using the Army Painter Wargamer character brush again here, just so you can do really small highlights on the areas that you've just done with the previous mix. This just to give a little bit more texture and shape to that wood, so it doesn't just look like a dark, flat surface. I'm going to use plain Balor Brown, using this to do the straps. And all we're doing is using this to kind of edge highlight these straps and pick out the details on it. The good thing about this is when you've used the Bane Blade Brown and then the Snake Bite Leather, the Balor Brown is a really good highlight colour for it. It gets that leather effect really, really easily. Now we're going to use some Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. What we're doing here is we're adding a little bit of this to the shield. Where I'm thinking the skeleton chap's probably going to be hanging around for large periods of time. He's probably going to have his shield down. So you're going to get water collecting there. Maybe a few little bits of green on the bones from where it's underneath the robes. And the robes have been wet. Been hanging on that bone for a long time. And also a little bit on the spear just because the wood would get a bit damp over time now i'm just going to use a tiny little bit of lead belcher from citadel just to put the bolts through the spear here make them stand out if you do put a little bit too much on and it goes onto the red cloth you can just use the shade that you used on the cloth in this case juji violet just to put a blob of that over the top edge of that bolt where it joins the cloth and that'll just shade that right down again now we're going to use some citadel rakarth flesh just to do the little flag badge on the left hand side there did record some footage doing the pattern on the right hand side there but it was absolutely dire basically just doing a little square bit of one color and then a crescent going each way or a half crescent going each way to do those lines if you'd like to see a little video of how i did that i'll sling one together and put that up for you but just add in the picture on the flag like so 
Now we're just going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Corn Red. We're just going to pick out around the edges and make sure that we've got all those details on the flag. Like so. And that is the finished Death Rattle Skeleton. I'm really pleased with how it turned out, especially the cloth, so looking forward to painting some more of those. I think overall, very happy with that one. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and enjoy the content, and you'd like to support us, our Coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.